Okay, in this video we're going to look at the notion of an injective function. So given a function f from a to b, so the domain is a and the codomain is b, we say f is injective, or sometimes one to one, if for all x, y in a, if f of x equals f of y, then x equals y. So generally the first description of such a function is given graphically. So let's say over here we have a set A, over here we have a set B, we've got a bunch of dots in this bubble over here which represent elements in A, and then we have a bunch of dots over here that represent elements in B, and then we can draw our function as arrows from the dots in A to the dots in B. So if every element of A goes to a new element of B, so like this, this would be an injective function. So notice every element in the domain goes to a different element in the codomain. So that makes this injective. Good, but now um, suppose otherwise that we have this function A, sorry, we have this set over here A which has these three dots and this set over here B which has four dots and then maybe th our function goes as follows. So these first two dots are mapped to the same element so that makes this not injective. Great. So now uh, let's look at some examples that you will have seen like in calculus class. So an example of an injective function would be like f of x equals 3x plus 2. So that's an injective function. Notice that we could graph it looks like that and that passes the horizontal line test. And in fact if you know the graph of a function it's going to be injective or one to one if and only if it passes the horizontal line test. But maybe some non-examples would be like f of x equals x squared and that's kind of obvious because notice if we take f of negative 1 we get 1 which is the same thing as f of 1 but negative 1 is not equal to 1. In other words we have two elements of the domain which are different which are mapped to the same element of the range. Okay, good. I'm going to clean up the board and then uh, we'll look at an outline for a proof of proving something is an injective function. Okay, before we look at some examples in detail, I want to look at the outline for showing that a function is injective. So let's say our claim is that this function f from a to b is injective, then the outline of Basically, any proof that you would have to prove a function is injective looks like this. I mean, there will be some cases where it is easier to prove it another way, but this generally works. So you want to start off supposing that x and y are in A with f of x equals f of y. And then you'll take this equation, f of x equals f of y, and you'll do some calculations on this equation until you get down here to this point that x equals y and then that tells you that s is that f is injective and that's all there is to it okay I'll clean up the board and we'll look at some examples okay so we want to show the following function is injective so let's define it with the domain of r minus uh, the number 0 um, and then the range is just all real numbers. And so f of x is defined by 1 over x plus 1, so that makes it clear why we had to exclude 0 from the domain. We want to show that guy's injective. Okay, so we're going to follow our proof outline. So let's suppose that x and y are in the domain, so that's r minus 0, with f of x equals f of y. Great. Great. But then we can apply our formula that we know for f of x minus f of y. So what that tells us, sorry, f of x equals f of y, that, that tells us that 1 over x plus 1 equals 1 over y plus 1. Great. But then that immediately follows that 1 over x equals 1 over y, but then also that follows that x equals y, so f is injective. And that finishes our proof. And before we move on to the next example, I want to make a like an important point about 
presenting proofs on a chalkboard and talking them out verbally versus writing them down like for a homework exercise. And if you were to do such um, an exercise in homework, you would replace this shorthand that's very common uh, for use on the chalkboard and very appropriate for use on the chalkboard with words. So in other words, when writing for homework, here you would use complete sentences. And not this kind of shorthand and so this is something that's really important to keep in mind, that presentation of a proof on a chalkboard and writing it down for homework or for a math paper that you're writing or anything like that is a different beast altogether and you want to use complete sentences over there, whereas you can say the complete sentences to your audience when you're writing it on a chalkboard. Okay, I'm going to clean up the board and then we'll do another example. Okay, so for our next example, we'll look at the following function. So we've got this function g from z cross z to z cross z. It's given by g of mn equals uh, the ordered pair m plus n, m plus 2n. So we're going to follow the same outline that we did before. So let's suppose that we have two elements of the domain. So last time we wrote them as x and y, but maybe we want to choose something different because our domain is z cross z. So let's choose m comma n and maybe r comma S, those are both elements of our domain z cross z, and they satisfy this rule that g of mn equals g of rs. Great. And so from there, we can apply the formula that defines uh, g, and that tells us that we have the ordered pair m plus n, and then m plus 2n equals the ordered pair r plus s, r plus 2s. And that's just uh, given by this left-hand side and this right-hand side. But then, let's recall that ordered pairs are equal if and only if uh, their entries are equal. So that gives us two equations, m plus n equals r plus s, and m plus 2n equals r plus 2s. Okay, good. But now what we can do is solve this system of equations for m and n, um, but maybe the best way to do that is just by subtracting these two equations. So if we do the second equation minus the first equation, notice the m's will cancel here, the r's will cancel here, and that will immediately give us n equals s. And then notice plugging n equals s into this first equation will immediately give us m equals r. Okay, good. But then, if n equals s and m equals r, that means mn equals rs. In other words, the inputs were the same, from which it follows that g is injective, which is exactly what we wanted to show. Um, okay, good. So, uh, I think this is a good place to end the video.